Hi friend, it's Pat Sloan here for my daily video. So we have uh, one, uh, we have a, a, an organization task today, but it's a little, you know, it's cleaning. Yeah, we gotta, we have to, we have to wipe things down today. Whether that means actually attacking your machine, getting in there, and getting into all the little crevices, like even down here, right? If you have a set-in machine, these things that come up, you know, the dust collects down underneath there. It can be a freaking mess. <laughs> it can be like really, you get a lot of dust. F fiber, fabric creates fabric batting. It creates a lot of dust. I think it just creates dust sitting on the shelf. Like all of a sudden the dust particles come out. So wipe down your tabletop, your floor. And also the book, if you have a bookcase, I always find like if I haven't gone on a bookshelf for a while, like the front ledge, dust. You can just break your name in the, in the dust. Yeah, so get do that today. Do some of that today or, to, or tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Uh, but do it on the weekend here. Get it done. Get yourself cleaned up, wiped down. That's your task for today. You could report back in too. You could show us some nice tidy spot that you got cleaned up. That would be lovely. That's <laughs> So um, I wanted to give you an update on the Aurifil Designer of the Month, uh, that quilt um, layout. Right now we are sort of waiting to see if, you know, the timing wise to get the quilt back from Shelly Pagnelli who is quilting it. And so we'll do the post with the layout when that comes about. Uh, the Orifil Designer of the Month is a program I ran for quite a few years for the Orifil company and we decided that uh, it was time for it to be done. Uh, it had run it sort of run its course and it was lovely and I enjoyed doing it so much but you know you have to change things up every once in a while so it was time for the company to do a little bit of other things. It was time for me to do some other things. So that was the last year in 2020. What a year right? That's <laughs> And I did it for 10 years. I did it for 10 years. And then I think it was 10 years. And then one year I did, I was the only one. I did the block of the month myself for the whole year for them. So things go on, things change. This year I'm doing the block of the month that Kim Lapachek is uh, hosting. And that's really fun because I don't have to organize it. <laughs> I can just have fun doing it and do my one month. So there's the block of the month that's going on for me for this year. Uh, I really like the, having more shorter projects rather than more block of the month projects. I mean, it just depends on your personality. I like to sort of do the week, you know, week by week, and then you finish something uh, versus waiting a whole year. But a year is fun too, particularly I like it with the different designers so that you can try out all these different things and see what they're doing. And it doesn't, it just sort of comes every so often then like, you know, you know every once a month. It's not like this big, big project thing because uh, that, you know, being this uh, all different types of people's works, each time the pattern is going to be formatted a little bit differently, the layout of their website will be a little bit different, and so every time it's a learning experience to get to know the designer. So that's what's going on there. Um, I did do some of my cross stitch. Uh, what's the, here, I've got the bag. So I've got a project bag. I love these project bags, and I put, look, I put the little socialite butterfly on there for the zipper pull. So cute, so cute. So this is the one I needed to get started. It's very long, it's called monthly markings. And I showed you that yesterday. So for me, getting it started was a bit of a like, okay, I gotta get, you know, it's a, this big, I haven't done anything that's long like that. I mean, I haven't done a lot of cross stitch. So most of them are just sort of fit in the area here. They're small, but this is going to be long. so. I have the whole thing, uh, you know, clipped up here like this behind the frame so that I can just work. And then I have a new, look at the flower, <gasps> the needle minder. So I can put the needle on there. So I've got two of the frames done in and I am using Kimberly's thread kit. And she did different colors than the original one. She's doing a lighter palette. It's like on the stone gray, but a lighter palette. And so she, you get a card when you buy the threads from her that give you all the color translations so that she has a different um, a different set different set of colors and so that's really nice and then she shows you a picture of hers on there so you can see the colors and I'm excited that it's all set up now now I can just stitch so my my goal is to get 
December done and a little bit of the border around like this, the snowman square around the outside. So that'll be by, for by the end of the month, which is a little tight because I didn't start it right at the beginning of the month. But you know how that goes, right? You see all of a sudden you see a project and you're like, you just jump in, but it's already been started. Yeah, <laughs> that would be that one. So I had to thank Jo today. She sent me this beautiful scarf. She actually sent me a couple of scarves. So I had to wear this one today. Isn't that pretty? And then she sent me this gorgeous black. Look at this. Look at that. The black and the pot pink. And then she had the second red one with huge, <clears throat> these huge great big flowers on it. I love that. Blue flowers. And then a gorgeous pink one for the breast cancer, which has, I'll hold it up. It's got the ribbons there. It's got the ribbons and the butterfly. Yeah, see the butterfly and flowers. So this is just, and it's silk. So it's just beautiful. It feels so nice. Thank you, Joe. Mwah. These are gorgeous. I appreciate them. Have a little new something to wear. That's fun, right? <laughs> I like I like scarves. <laughs> Did you, could you tell? That's now I had a question uh, from Darlene. So let's so she was asking about the bob and thread color when you're machine quilting. When you're putting the three la layers together, often you you have your top thread color, whichever you decide to either blend it to what you're quilting it on, or it might be. Um, you know, a contrast to what you're quilting on. But then you have the backing fabric, which doesn't change. You think on your top you might have red fabric and white fabric and blue fabric and, you know, pink fabric. But on the back, you might just, you, you probably just have one piece of fabric. So she's like, how do you tell what thread to use? And what thread color on the bobbin? So here's my couple of thoughts on that. If you're fairly new and you can do it, uh, I would make the bobbin the same color as the top until you get all your tension right when you're free, if you're free motion, if you're free, free motion quilting. Even if you're walking foot quilting, you wanna check your tension because you don't want your bobbin thread color popping up. Let's say your back thread, is, back of your quilt is navy and you're quilting on white on the top. You've got white thread in the machine, navy in the bobbin underneath. So if your tension isn't right, that navy thread is going to pop up and show on your white and you're gonna see little navy dots everywhere that's usually not the look we're going for. So if you have white in the bobbin and white in the top, then if there is some tension issue, you're not going to see it. Although you should probably just fix the tension issue. So that would be another story. Um, but I thought I'd show you a piece where <clears throat> it's a small piece, this little sheep, a ah, lot of sheep, 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 sheep little sheepies. Um, I did this for one of the button clubs. See the buttons? And I'll link you below to the sheep. <laughs> but I have on here, how many colors? At least two or three. So the, the sheep are quilted in one color. Then there's uh, around on some of the darker areas, like also like here, you know, there's dark um, parts of it. And then in the, uh, yeah, like there's dark in the green here. It's like it's dark green. But anyways, let me just show you the back. So you can see on the back here, let me just hold it up now. You can see on the back that I have a light print. So the areas where I use the dark thread, you can see where I use the dark thread. So I was outlining things, but do you mind it? Do you care? Um, I don't care. I like to use the same thread in the bobbin that's in the top and just not worry about the fact that on my back, you can see two different thread colors. This has never bothered me and I have done it for years and years and years. So it, I wanna show you one other one. We just, those samples were not as good a sample. Uh, so here I have <clears throat> on the back, you can see the, the white thread. And then on the edges here, there's black, which you can't see probably at all. On the front, I had done the white, which actually wasn't white, white. It's actually a tan. So on the back, it looks pretty white, but on here it is actually tan because you can see it. Uh, and then I did blacks out here. 
So that is what it's going to look like. And this is not free motion quilted. The sheep are free motion. Uh, and this one is with the walking foot. So I hope that gives you a little bit, oops, <laughs> back it up, back, back, beep, beep. So I hope that just shows you a little bit about what it's going to look like. If you have a big project, it is worth it to do a test. Get a little quilt sandwich of like a 12 inch square with the fabrics that you want to test. Uh, if you have several fabrics for the front, make a strip and then on the back, put your backing fabric of this test square. And then just use your either your free motion or your walking foot, whatever you're going to use, and go along and see what it looks like. See how it, it works with two different colors. Or put in the same color and see what you think about it on the back backing fabric. Because if it's a print like this, often when you have a print, you're not really seeing it. Versus like here on the black polka dots, you really do, you really do see that uh, tan on there. Testing is your friend. And I know it seems boring, but in the long run, you take the time to test rather than doing a bunch of quilting and decide you don't like what you're doing. Then all of a sudden you have this big mess that you have to undo or you know, pick out. All right, one more thing. I want to tell you that over on my kitchen adventures, I have been working with my sourdough starter and I'm going to put a picture. Here's my sourdough starter and I am getting ready to make my first loaf with it. I had to buy a, um, cast, a Dutch oven, you know, like the cast iron pot. I got the ceramic glazed ones or whatever it's called, a porcelain or however it is, but it's got the glazing. It's not like a pure cast iron, but the I got the Lodge brand, which was totally recommended. And for bread baking, uh, the glazed is perfectly you know, good for, by most bakers say. So I got this big cast iron pot now and, <laughs> and I have sourdough starter, um, but I haven't made my first loaf yet. I have to go and get the recipe for making the loaf and just you know, figure out the timing. Um, sometimes I start too late. I'm like 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm like, okay, let me just start this now when it needed to have been done at nine o'clock in the morning to be able to bake it in the afternoon. And so that's why I just don't have to, I have to read the timing on it. So if you would like to talk food or cooking or looking for new th things to make or want to ask questions about something you are making or an ingredient you want to try, come over to my kitchen adventures. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun there. Uh, and, uh, Gosh, some really great, great cooks in there. You can get really good ideas and really good help if you have something that you're trying to figure out. All right, I am off <laughs> to, to do some stuff today and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for being here. I love you. Mwah. See you online.